Okay, YouTube, it's uh, January 18th, coming up on 6 o'clock. Very cold day today. It's 18 outside. It's about right at 50 in here. Right there is the piece in question that we're going to be cutting out. There is metal in behind here. So hopefully this won't be too bad because we'll have this metal acting as a backup force. And what I'm thinking I'll do, I'll just, I want to stay off of this corner. So I think I'm going to come up about right here and probably come right around in this point. And then just below this area right here. I'm not going to worry about this hole for now. I'll let the weather strip and tell me where that hole goes. And uh, we'll go ahead and fix this. We'll put some of the copper weld on the back. And then uh, we might throw a little epoxy on it here a little bit later. Okay, YouTube. Here's the place I'm getting ready to cut out of this driver's door. Probably should have done this a long time ago. Used my tape as a guide. And I went ahead and taped up some of this door since it's already got some nice epoxy on it. I've also got a uh, welding blanket over it. So that's where I'm at. Okay guys, getting ready to cut this little section out here. And uh, y'all say goodbye to a old pair of friends here these are the gloves I used to put the trunk pan in the car and as you can tell they're gone but it's just something about it we were talking about it Roger and uh, another youtuber we were talking about how we hated to get rid of our gloves so. but Got a new pair. This is the kind I like to use. I know everybody has their favorites, but this is the Tillman 1415. I really like these for sheet metal work. They fit great. It takes a little bit for me to get them broke in, but it's what I like to wear. I just, I got good dexterity in them, so. I wanted to show you something on this patch. I don't know how a lot of guys do it, but this is your typical cutoff wheel. And you can see just how bulky that is getting it right in this tight corner. And I like using these Dremel tools a lot. And this is the, uh, the thin cut cutoff wheel. And Basically, you just pull this piece down and it comes off. So it's a pretty neat tool. And that's how I like to do these small little detail areas. I can, I can usually get this in here really easy and, and cut it out where I need it to be. And it works real well. These things are a little expensive. I think pack of five maybe. I think they're roughly two dollars each. I think they're about ten bucks for a pack. And I think it might be a little bit more if you get that little special adapter. So, but anyway, I just thought I'd share that. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting this out and uh, I'll bring you back when we get it cut out. Okay guys, this is uh, not a plunge cut. I always have to remind myself when I get to cutting with the cutoff wheel, I always want to just let it sink into the metal, but there is metal behind here. So we have to be aware of that so we just can't go crazy and just let it plunge cut into there. Now, there is one little issue here. Even with this big wheel, well, not really a big wheel, but about an inch and a half wheel, probably cut down to about an inch now. Even with it, I still can't get that corner because it's cut into my base metal. 
I actually hit it just a little bit, but uh, wasn't paying attention. But anyway, when you run into that, you save your smaller wheels. Because what that will allow you to do, get down in there a little tighter without hitting your base metal. Most of you guys that do this and already know, but just in case there's somebody out there watching the channel that don't, here's a little tip I've learned. Right there is as deep as we have, as far down as we have to go. And you can see I've got about an eighth of an inch before I hit my base metal. So save these small ones just for that. It'll help you. Okay, for the most part, got the little area of damage there cut out. It is spot welded right there. So, we'll take a grinding wheel and just grind it out. I really like the 3 16 grinding wheel. And something else that I like is these swivels. They after you use them a long time, they will leak a little bit. But what it allows you to do is get up here like this and that air hose is not coming up and then coming down. It bends really easy. And I've used them for so long now, it just it feels weird not having it like that. So, so I'm just gonna grind this out. And we're, we're through all the way here. Once we get this done, I'll, I'll come in here with the roll lock, clean everything up, and be ready to make a patch. Okay guys, just uh, got the patch here removed. It did wind up bending this corner just a little bit. I was able just to massage it back in place with the body hammer and get ready to clean up some of this area now. And I'll just do that with a roll lock. We'll make us a patch out of uh, some poster board. It's just pretty basic, just a square cut. We'll put one hole in it for plug welding and we'll be done. Okay, YouTube, there it is all cleaned up. I uh, used an assortment of wire wheels, wire brushes, and this to get into the corners, this little deburr tool. It works well to kind of clean the metal up in the corners somewhere maybe you couldn't get a roll lock. And like I said, this is just a basic patch, but in case there's somebody that's new, that's just learning, most of you guys know all about this stuff, but made it out of uh, some poster board. And it's still just a little tight. I like to have just a just a real small gap in there, just a little place for the wire to go, really. I usually like to come in here and spot blast these areas, but uh, we're way past that on this door. Actually, this should have been done during that time. So, there was just an oversight. I thought it was okay, and then after looking at it, I was like, I wish I would have fixed that. And it's not too late to fix it. We're gonna go ahead and get it fixed. And we'll be moving forward. Just a little bit of weld through primer. We'll be ready to uh, transfer our patch to metal. And then we'll be ready to weld. Okay guys, got a little weld through primer. We'll let that set overnight. We haven't made the patch up yet. Here's the initial tacks do some grinding and then a little bit more welding.
okay, you two. We got the patch done. I wasn't really planning on doing all that tonight, but uh, just got in a roll and uh, went ahead and welded it in. So, got to looking at this uh, passenger door that already has a weather stripping on it, and I wanted to show you that. Of course, the area we're working in is the driver's door, but this will give you a visual of how the weather stripping does. This is the area right here, and this weather strip's about ripped right there, so I'm probably going to wind up re-gluing it when I put it on the uh, door, whichever door I'm going to use. But this area right in here is the area we were working in on the driver's side. So let's go over and take a look. Like I said, most of you guys already know this, but just in case they Somebody new to the channel, just getting started in this stuff. Here it is. Turned out pretty good for no more than what it is. Just a little patch there. Had a little bit of metal shrinkage right there. A little bit of epoxy. And this repair will virtually disappear. I like it a lot better than what we had before. 